Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to solve logarithmic equations. And so let's go ahead and start with a general strategy or procedure that you can try to apply to all these types of problems. And so the first part of our strategy is we're going to attempt to rewrite our logarithmic equation in one of two forms. We're gonna to try to isolate the logarithm, write it as log base b of m is equal to some single constant number c. Or if we can't isolate it and break it down to a single logarithm, We'll try to get it into one logarithm equal to another logarithm where the inputs of these logarithms, m and n, will probably be some expressions involving uh, our variables or some other functions. And so that means we're gonna have kind of two paths to follow depending on how we are able to rewrite that original equation. If we are able to rewrite it as a single log is equal to some number, then we can convert the logarithmic form of our equation into its exponential form rewrite log base b of m equals c as b to the power of c is equal to m, and then solve from there. Or, and from that other form, where log base b of m is equal to log base b of n, we can use the fact that our logarithmic functions are one to one, so we're gonna get the same output only when the inputs are the same, and that basically means that m would have to be equal to n, so we can drop the log part set the insides equal to each other, and solve that resulting equation. Again, m and n might be some expressions involving our variable, as well as our variable mixed with some other more complicated functions. So depending on that form we were able to get our logarithmic equation in, we have to then rewrite our logarithmic equation. That allows us to move on to step three, where we can then solve for our variable. And then we have a fourth step here after solving for our variable. This is something we did not have to do, or some of our uh, earlier problems like our exponential equations, but what we're required to do for our logarithmic equations is check our solutions. We have to always check our solutions in the original equation because what might end up happening is we pick up some extraneous solutions by using some of our log properties to rewrite things and manipulate things, and we might end up picking up a solution that doesn't actually work. So when we are checking our solutions in our original equation, we have to plug those solutions into our original equation and make sure that the input does not turn into a negative number. All right, so our first step here is to try to isolate our logarithm if we're able to do so, or get it written as one log equal to another log. And it definitely seems like we are already in that first case. We have our logarithm equal to a single number. So that means we're gonna to wanna to move on to step two, where we rewrite our logarithmic equation in its exponential form. So remember to convert a logarithmic equation to its exponential form, the inside of our logarithm, x squared minus seven that is, is gonna be equal to the base of our logarithm raised to the power our logarithm is equal to. So that's gonna be three to the power of two. So remember what comes out of our logarithm, that number two is the power we have to raise our base to in order to get the number inside. So if we take our base of three, raise it to that power of two, we get what is inside of our logarithm. X squared minus seven is equal to nine. Right, because three squared is equal to nine. And well now, we can subtract nine from each side of our equation. And we're just solving a simple quadratic here. We get X squared minus 16 is equal to zero. And that'll factor as X minus four times X plus four equals zero. And here we get two solutions from our quadratic equation. X could be equal to positive four, or X could be equal to negative four, but we're not quite done yet. We can't forget about this final step where we have to check our solutions in our original equation. And so we do not kick out a X value or a solution just because it is negative. We have to plug it into our original equation and make sure the quantity inside of our logarithm stays positive. If that quantity stays positive, we keep that X value in. If it turns that quantity negative, then we get rid of it. So if we use x equals four, we get 16 minus seven is positive nine, that, or log base three of nine is equal to two, so that works. But that's exactly what we get if we use negative four instead, right? Negative four squared is also gonna give us positive 16, minus seven still gives us positive nine, and that's really as far as we have to take it. We have to go through all the steps, make sure that log base three of nine is actually equal to two. We can stop as soon as we see the quantity inside of our logarithm is positive. So we checked both of our solutions. Both solutions work here. X equals positive four or X equals negative four are solutions 
to our original logarithmic equation. I have another example of a logarithmic equation that I want us to solve using our general strategy or procedure. So here we want to try to solve log base 6 of the quantity x plus 5 plus log base 6 of x is equal to 2. And so our first uh, task here to work towards solving this logarithmic equation is try to either get it equal to one logarithm equal to a number or one logarithm equal to another logarithm. So either way, we're going to have to try to combine some logarithms together using our logarithmic properties. And here we can notice that we're adding two logarithms together with the same base. And that allows us to use our product property for logarithms. So we can rewrite the left hand side as log base six of x plus five times x. And that's going to be equal to the same right hand side of two. And so we could have done this in our first step as well, actually multiplied those inputs together, write it as x squared plus 5x. The idea here is after that first step, or that first step and a half, we now have our logarithmic equation in that nice form of a single logarithm equal to a single number. And so now we're able to convert our logarithmic equation to its exponential form. Remember, x squared plus 5x will be equal to the base of our logarithm raised to the power of 2. So x squared plus 5x is equal to 36, or we can rewrite that as x squared plus 5x minus 36 is equal to 0. And now we have a quadratic equation that we have to solve. Remember, we can solve our quadratics using the quadratic formula if necessary, but factoring is almost always what we try first. So to factor x squared plus 5x minus 36 equals 0, we've got to think of two numbers that multiply together to give us negative 36 and add together to give us positive 5. And those numbers should be 9 and negative 4. So we factored our quadratic as x plus 9 times x minus 4 is equal to 0. And from there we see we get two potential solutions. x could be equal to negative 9 or we could have x be equal to positive 4. Remember, we are not done solving a logarithmic equation until we have checked our solutions in the original equation. All right, so if we plug in x equals negative 9 into our original equation, we get log of negative 4 plus log of negative 9. That's no good. We can't take logs of negative numbers, so we have to kick this solution out. All right, so we have to also check x equals 4. So log base 6 of 9, that's a positive number, plus log base 6 of 4, that's a positive number. That works out. We don't have to check the rest of the arithmetic there. So x equals 4 is our solution. If we plug x equals 4 into our original equation, the insides of our logarithms never become a negative number. So that works as a solution.